Hello everyone, here we are with another week of space news starting from Saturday the 16th of September 2023. Today's episode will contain this week's launches and in the news we'll talk about Starbase but also James Webb Space Telescope which has found further information that exoplanet K218b may contain life. We'll also see what is happening at the ISS and discuss a discovery that may support a life in Mars. On the 16th of September, SpaceX launched 22 Starlink V2 mini satellites called Group 616 to low Earth orbit at 530 kilometers altitude from the Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Now the booster has landed for its fifth time on the drone ship Just Read the Instruction. This was SpaceX 65th Falcon 9 launch of the year. This amounts to 5,113 Starlink satellite launched to date and 4,765 Starlink satellites still on orbit. On the 17th of September, a Long March 2D was sent from the Qishan Satellite Launch Center in China by the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation. Now, the payload was the, the second uh, Yogan 3902, which is a remote sensing satellite. And this is all I could gather on this launch. September 19th, Rocket Lab sent his mission We Will Never Desert You from his launch complex 1B in New Zealand on board an electron rocket to circular low Earth orbit at an altitude of 635 kilometers. The satellite was a synthetic aperture radar and weighed 160 kilograms from Capella Space. Sadly, the launch failed right after separation of the first and second stage. The Electron rocket has previously delivered 171 satellites to orbit across 37 successful orbital missions. Rocket Lab put a statement that they will identify the issue swiftly and implement corrective actions and return to the pad shortly. On the 20th of September, SpaceX launched 22 Starlink V2 mini satellites, Group 617, to low Earth orbit at 530 km altitude from the Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Now the booster has landed for a whopping 17th time on the drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. So that is definitely the, <laughs> the longest uh, of the series um, uh, and the first uh, obviously worldwide and uh, this was SpaceX 67th Falcon 9 launched in 2023. This amounts to 5,135 Starlink satellite launched and 4,787 Starlink satellites still on orbit. On the 21st of September Galactic Energy sent a Ceres-1 rocket from the Jiuquang Satellite Launch Center Launch Area 95A in China with on board the satellite Jilin 14B High Resolution Earth Observation destined to Sun Synchronous Orbit. Now, unfortunately, the rocket has failed to reach orbit. The company Galactic Energy has had nine successful launches and today was his first failure of a Ceres 1. So investigation is underway and no further information is available about the cause of such a failure. At Starbase, um, what we see today is uh, booster number 10 having his cryogenic tests in Massey site. We also see the assembly of uh, ship 20, uh, 31. And on the left hand side and on the right hand side, you see ship 30 and 29. Whilst ship 28 has his um, engines being installed as we speak. 
And also we have the Ship 25 being detached from Booster 9. Now this is nothing really to worry about, it's just that the flight uh, is expected in the weeks to come, so therefore it's pointless to leave it on top, especially if there is high winds and so forth. This week, Stockspace has static fired with Hopper 2, I've mentioned that uh, a few weeks back. They simulated a hop to test everything from flight avionics, power systems, computers, guidance and navigation systems, reaction control systems, tank pressurization, and the engine and its heat shield, of course. Now, the Mad Max looking fire on top is actually caused by the system trying to correct a trajectory after deliberately simulating the rocket veering, of course, where you can see the reaction control system was fighting hard to correct. According to Stop space, this test was a huge success across the board. So now Stock Space has tested is Hooper number two. Um, and as you can see, quite an amazing uh, jump, not very high, but at least it demonstrates everything they were looking for. In 2015, Kepler's Space Telescope discovered K218, which is a red dwarf equivalent to our Sun, but more red, as well as two exoplanets, K218b and K218c, all being 120 light years away from Earth. Now, K218b is about 8.6 times the mass of Earth and rotates around his red dwarf, K218, in 33 days, very similar to Earth around the Sun, getting a similar quantity of light as on Earth. Now, this is an ideal condition to be a potentially habitable world with the existence of liquid water. And in the last few days, NASA mentioned that the James Webb Space Telescope detected carbon dioxide and methane in the atmosphere of K218b. Well, Webb's data suggests that the planet might be covered in ocean with a hydrogen-rich atmosphere. Now, the abundance of methane and carbon dioxide and also the shortage of ammonia supports the hypothesis that there may be a water ocean underneath a hydrogen-rich atmosphere in K218b. Now, the initial web observation also provided a possible detection of a molecule called dimethyl sulfide, also known in this graph as DMS. Now, on Earth, this is only produced by life. The bulk of the DMS is Earth atmosphere and is emitted from phytoplankton in marine environments. No doubt, we will get more information about K218b in the coming months and years. Let's turn to the ISS to see what ESA is reporting this week. On his hugging mission, ESA astronaut Andreas Morgensen exercises with the spaceware monitor strapped um, to his chest to measure his vital health parameters, such as skin temperature and heart rate. Now, there are already plenty of uh, health monitor in use in the uh, ISS. But what sets the spaceware monitor apart from these is the frequency and quality of the data that it measures. Along with the, his long battery, they are looking at seeing how the spaceware monitor can help astronauts in their daily life on the space station. Following on last week episodes, this week MS-24 crew arrived at the ISS. Now, the NASA astronauts have produced the first human knee meniscus, which was successfully 3D bioprinted in microgravity at the ISS Biofabrication Facility. So, the, the facility produced knee cartilage from bionic stem cells to help speed recovery from musculoskeletal injury. Multicellular biofilms found in kombucha, which is a fermented, light, effervescent, sweetened black tea, have shown promises in surviving harsh environments on Earth 
prompting scientists to investigate their potential to endure space's extreme conditions. Now, the microorganisms are even being considered as biofactories for self-sustaining life support systems for space settlement. Now, ESA's exposed facilities held uh, experiments on the International Space Station to investigate if and how bacteria survive in space and in simulated Martian conditions. Now, samples flew on the outside of the space station, as you can see on the picture. Now, the results show that a microorganism, cyanobacterium, was able to repair its DNA and resume cell division even after being exposed to cosmic radiation, even resisting the destructive iron ions that cause extensive cell damage. Now, Petra Redberg, the head of uh, German Aerospace Center, DLR Astrobiology Group, in Cologne said recently that the cultures show great potential in supporting long-term human presence on the Moon and on Mars. Now, Nicole Kaplan, an ESA deep space exploration scientist, added due to their ability to produce oxygen and functions as biofactories, this biotechnology could significantly enhance future space mission and human space exploration efforts. I hope to see our samples attached to the Lunar Gateway in the future or perhaps utilized on the surface of the Moon and beyond. Until then, we will continue to explore the possibilities our biocultures offer. Now, this is um, this amazing discovery will, will support astronauts in their moon or base or Mars base even uh, self sufficiency. The picture of the week is the swirls of the galaxy IC 1776 standing in splendid isolation in this image from NASA ESA Hubble Space Telescope. This galaxy actually lies over 150 million light years from Earth in the constellation Kishi. Now, thank you for watching this episode. I will bring you more space news next week. And in the meantime, keep learning about space. I'm Christophe Paget, your space news provider. Goodbye.